Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and you're now locked into the channel where we've been watching The Watchmen to break down everything that you need to know about the new season on HBO. Throughout this video, we'll be recapping the third entry in the season thus far and discussing where the show could be heading in the future. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to watch episode 3 yet and don't want to know what happens, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. With that out of the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of Watchmen Episode 3. So far on Watchmen, we've unearthed a huge conspiracy inside the police department that showed one of its high-ranking officers was linked with a white supremacist group known as the 7th Cavalry that carried out attacks on police and the public. Episode 3 carries on this narrative, but it mainly answers a lot of questions that people have had about the show and how it ties in with the original graphic novel. This time we learn a lot of the history of the universe since the 80s and also discover what's been going on with some of the characters of the source material. The episode opens with Laurie Blake reaching out to Dr. Manhattan to tell him a joke. In classic Watchmen style it's got a really dark punchline to it and this episode very much centres around Laurie and her actions. Now from the off this is clearly Silk Spectre Jr and those who are familiar with the source material will recall that she was a pivotal part in it and also the ex-girlfriend of Dr. Manhattan. Since changing her name at the end of the graphic novel, she was very clearly unearthed and has created a deal with the government in order to not go to jail. For those who don't know, Laurie was closely tied to the government through her relationship with Dr. Manhattan and we can assume that this gave her some leniency upon being captured. She has slowly risen through the ranks of the FBI and is now a commanding officer that takes down vigilantes. Laurie used to be one but she clearly has seen firsthand that allowing them to operate could lead to the death of millions as happened at the end of the book. She's had a very bad experience with vigilantes in the past and even though she used to rank amongst them, her change of heart makes sense in light of the actions of Ozymandias. Her heart clearly still fawns for both Night Owl and Dr. Manhattan and in her apartment we see a pet owl named Who as well as a blue dildo later in the episode. I wonder if she has a duplicate to that. Anyway, we learn that Night Owl aka Dan Dryberg has been arrested for being a vigilante and Senator Joseph Keane, whose father was behind the Keane Act that outlawed mass crime fighters in the first place, tasks her with investigating Captain Crawford's murder, promising her that if he becomes president, he will free her love. Laurie really has a rich past. Her mother was the original Silk Spectre, her father was the comedian, and she has had relationships with both Night Owl and Dr. Manhattan. However, she is at a point where she seems like she just wants to be as far away from the life of a superhero as possible due to all the misery that it caused her. This long shadow is difficult to escape from and it's clear that many are enamoured with her and her reputation. The portrayal is awesome and quickly Laurie became my favourite character in the show. When reading the comics, I was never that bothered by her, finding her pretty uninteresting and boring. And don't even get me started on the movie depiction, because yeah, there's a reason Malin Ackerman didn't do much after it. However, Gene Smart nails this, painting out the character as a hardened cop that only really lets down her guard when talking through the phone to her one connection to her past, Dr. Manhattan. Now, I'm going to get into what I sort of took this as, and I might be wrong, so make sure you leave your thoughts on my analysis of this. So, we know that Dr. Manhattan is a god and that he is above all else, the most powerful being in the universe. Laurie is still very much a follower of him and in some ways she views him as a god as well. Her reaching out to him through the phone is this universe's version of praying and though she knows she won't get a response, she still tries over and over because she believes in him and thinks that one day, just one day, he may sort her problems out. We learn that many people try and reach out to him but he never responds and this is almost like a church for them. It's subtly done and whilst I may be wrong, this reminded me a lot of confessional booths and churches and on the whole I found it a nice metaphor. She knows the truth behind the squid lie and because of this views herself as a monster doomed to go to hell which perhaps is the reason that she constantly turns to religion. I'll get onto the joke later but that was just my thought on why she goes to this booth. Anyway, she arrives at the crime scene where Judd was found hanged and quickly notices Will's tire tracks in the dirt. This leads her to Looking Glass who she hilariously tears apart and puts down. If you've been keeping up to date with the channel, you know how much I think that this guy is going to be one of the big villains and she makes a mockery of his costume, even using his mask as a mirror to pick her teeth. Laurie, due to what she's done though, really doesn't trust anyone and she is obsessed by her past and how much it bears weight on the present and future. She, like her mother, is completely consumed by it. Who remembers Silk Spectre Senior saying every day the future looks a little darker, but the past, even the grimy parts of it, well they just keep getting brighter all the time. 
Laurie has clearly inherited this view and she is very cynical throughout this reintroduction. Everything in this episode though builds to her getting to meet Angela face to face. It's Judd's funeral and yet there are obvious similarities here between this and the comedians. Both were clearly bad people even though they were admired by the public and Angela is forced to deliver a eulogy discussing how much of a good man that Judd was even though this wasn't the case. In the backdrop of this is a member of the 7th Cavalry who crawls underground to Judd's mausoleum, denouncing Senator Keane as a race traitor that has to be brought in. Laurie however snuck a gun in and manages to shoot him, second guessing that the cavalry member was lying about the bomb being rigged to his heart rate. However it turns out that he wasn't bluffing and Angela manages to avert more deaths though Judd's body is destroyed by the explosion. Throughout this scene we once more have the return of the ticking clock and it reminds us that the countdown is on. Elsewhere in the episode we see Ozymandias' plan begin to flesh out. There are more squids and a miniature catapult that will no doubt be used in some way. We can guess that Ozzy is testing his suit for the temperatures of space and there's even a black freighter easter egg thrown in there that is clearly hinting about what's going to happen. Ozymandias is building something that he needs to be thick and durable, capable of moving humans through a range of temperatures. Ozzy is stopped from getting a buffalo skin by a masked horseman and we later learn that this is the game's warden. From this we discover that Ozzy was indeed captured and put in exile on the island. Clearly they know what Ozzy did at the end of the graphic novel but if the truth ever came out it would cause the world economy to collapse so he has been placed here. Due to his wealth he probably has free reign but they are aware of his plan and will not let him proceed with another. Adrian rebuffs this but we know and the games warden knows that he's up to something. Donning his infamous costume for the episode's big money shot which cements that he is definitely back. Now personally I believe that Ozzy is either on the moon or on Mars and a prisoner of Dr. Manhattan. In episode 1 we saw Doc building a castle on Mars and this was very similar to the one that Adrian now lives in. Personally I believe that Ozzy is looking for a way to build a suit that can protect the inhabitant through the coldness of space and he will use the catapult to shoot himself off of the planet in order to get back to Earth. This makes a lot of sense to me especially with the procedures that he is going through and the clones could be creations of Dr. Manhattan. Ozzy is clearly somewhere that he can't escape from and trying to build a suit in order to get away. What he does when he returns to earth we don't know yet but yeah this is all starting to fall into place. Back in Oklahoma there's a mention of an intrinsic field generator being built by Russia which for those who don't know is the machine that created Dr. Manhattan. Angela and Laurie meet on the night and the latter states that she knows that Angela took whatever was in Judd's secret compartment. Laurie cannot perform an autopsy on Judd due to the explosion and she knows that there is something deeper going on here. She tries to scare Angela but Sister Knight doesn't scare that easy and she pretty quickly cements that she's not the pushover that Looking Glass was. Laurie ends up sleeping with her partner, making him wear a mask, desperate to reconnect with the life that she once had, even though she is now trapped in a world where she has been tasked with taking it down. Now I'm just going to go over the joke that's laced throughout it and what it means. The joke is about a bricklayer that teaches his daughter how to build a barbecue and this ends with her throwing a brick up in the air as high as she can. From here she tells a joke about three heroes who die and these are clearly Night Owl, Ozymandias and Dr. Manhattan. These three are judged by God who decides that they should go to hell for their misdeeds. Silk Spectre who was given no talent of her own is asked who she is and she says I'm the girl who threw the brick in the air. The brick falls killing God completely out of the blue which cements that Laurie believes that she could bring it all crashing down including the lie from the end of the graphic novel and that she has the power to do it at any time. The hell refers to jail in which Night Owl and Ozzy have been sent to and Dr. Manhattan's self-imposed exile on Mars. It's a nice joke that is in keeping with the Watchmen lore and Laurie leaves the booth. At the end Will's car comes crashing down and Laurie ends up standing there laughing much like how her father used to. This may indeed be Dr. Manhattan reaching out to her or the craft simply flying away but whatever it is I think it's building to the return of the godlike creature as well as Ozzy's plan to escape and get back to earth if he is indeed on Mars. Now this episode leaves a lot of questions and I'd obviously love to hear your theories on it and if you agree with me or not. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out my breakdown of the season so far which will be linked at the end. I go over everything that you need to know and the things you missed so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. If you want to come chat to me after the video then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT or head over to my Discord server which will be linked in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with all the latest videos on the channel so hopefully I'll see you over there very soon. 
We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 1 box set on Blu-ray which contains Civil War, Doctor Strange, Homecoming, Ragnarok and more. And all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on watching it in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of November and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize. So best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.